Batman's ultimate nemesis is of course the Joker. And though the two of them hate each other, they are also kind of codependent on each other. And even though the Joker's tried on many occasions to actually kill Batman, and has really wanted to end his life on those occasions, still, the Joker has saved Batman's life on several other occasions. Basically, their relationship is complicated. In some continuities, this is because the Joker needs Batman to fight with. After all, Batman is the ultimate opponent, and if the Joker gets rid of him, well, who is the Joker going to fight then? I mean, seriously, who is as good an opponent as Batman? And even in the continuities where the Joker does genuinely want Batman dead, Batman still has to die in a way that the Joker wants him to die, as the Joker feels that only he is allowed to kill the Batman, and only in the way that he chooses. So like I say, their relationship's complicated, but the Joker has saved Batman on several occasions, and this video is going to go over the five best times that he has saved him. DC Universe Online In the cinematic trailer to this video game, the Justice League are fighting a group of supervillains, and they are sadly losing. The Green Lantern has a broken arm, and Black Adam is basically beating the hell out of him, and even calls down the magic lightning, which seemingly kills Green Lantern and the Flash. Wonder Woman gets hit by a mystic lightning spell, and then is choked to death by being suffocated with kryptonite shoved down her throat. And then Superman is stabbed by Lex Luthor with a kryptonite spear. All in all, it's a pretty bad day for the Justice League. And as for Batman, he is tied up by Deathstroke in Wonder Woman's Lasso of Truth, and Deathstroke is preparing to kill him. That is, until the Joker sees what is happening, and fires a rocket launcher at Deathstroke to stop him from killing Batman. Of course, Batman loses an arm in the process, and gets his face and body severely burnt thanks to the explosion, but it did save his life. And the Joker did this because, as he puts it, Nobody kills the bat but me! Of course, it could be argued that the Joker didn't so much mean to save Batman, but was instead trying to kill Batman. The clown's logic being that if Batman is about to die, then Joker is the one who's going to be delivering the final blow. And to be honest, that is very likely what did happen. But considering how intimately the Joker knows the Dark Knight's armor's strength and his ability to survive, well, the Joker most likely knew that Batman could survive the blast. And even if the clown didn't know this, it still doesn't change the fact that the Joker's intervention did save Batman's life. Batman the Animated Series In this classic episode of the classic Batman show, the Joker casts Harley Quinn aside and she decides to prove her worth to him by catching Batman and killing him, as a gift for the Joker. And because she believes that once Batman is out of the way, she and the Joker can be together properly. And it actually goes really well. Harley Quinn is able to catch Batman, and ties him up over a pit of Jokerized fish that are going to eat him alive, and she is about to kill him when Batman points out that the Joker needs to see his death. Or how else can Harley prove that she's actually the one who finished Batman off? Which is actually a fair point, because the Joker would never believe that Harley can succeed where he has failed so many times. And of course, Batman knows that the Joker's ego will never let anyone else kill Batman but him. So the Joker turns up, nearly kills Harley Quinn in a fit of jealous rage, as she came closer to killing Batman than the Joker ever has, and the Joker then releases Batman, and then realises that now he's there, he might as well try to kill him himself. And so a fight and chase ensues, where the Joker actually falls to his death. Or at least he should have died, but somehow the Joker manages to survive to return another day. This actually happened quite a lot in the old show, where the Joker would fall from a great height, but somehow be fine in the next episode. And I do have to say that this episode of the series is actually amazing, as we not only get to see this whole story of Batman getting caught by Harley and then the Joker turning up, but we actually get to see Harley Quinn's origin for the very first time, as Harley Quinn was actually created in this series. And we also see just how effective Harley Quinn is without the Joker holding her back. The Batman In this series, just titled The Batman, there is an episode that shows Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson having a couple of rich friends, two brothers whom they hang out with a lot. But what they don't know is that both of these brothers are supervillains, 
and Batman and Robin are constantly fighting with them at the same time that Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson are hanging out with them. Of course, with Batman being Batman, he does work this out, and they are able to bring down the villains. But unfortunately, before they did that, the two villains worked out that Batman and Robin were actually Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, because, much like Batman, they just put two and two together, and they are going to tell the whole world their real identities and ruin their lives. And since Batman refuses to kill them, or lock them up in some secret prison away from the world, I mean, he is a hero after all, and doing that would not be very heroic, to be fair. But because of this, there is no way of stopping them from telling the world who Batman and Robin really are. But as the two villains are being driven away, it's revealed that the Joker has hijacked the van, and he intends to Jokerize the two villains, so they become essentially brain dead. He's doing it because he doesn't want to know who Batman is, and he doesn't want the world to know who Batman is either as he wants Batman to keep on being able to fight crime so they can keep up their rivalry. And this one actually shows us that saving Batman's life isn't just about making sure he doesn't die, it's also about protecting him and his secrets. Because if Batman's identity ever actually comes out, Batman does effectively die, and instead he just becomes Bruce Wayne in a Batsuit. And the Joker, of course, would never allow that. Harley Quinn, the animated series. In the pilot episode of the Harley Quinn series, Poison Ivy is desperately trying to convince Harley that the Joker doesn't care about her. Unfortunately, Harley is fixated on the Joker and refuses to accept the obvious, no matter how much the Joker abandons her or hurts her, because all the Joker cares about is himself and his feud with Batman, but Harley's psychosis stops her from being able to see this. But this all comes to a head, of course, when the Riddler captures both Harley Quinn and Batman, and forces the Joker to choose which one of them lives and which one dies. Now, of course, Harley expects the Joker to save her because she believes that he loves her. But no, the Joker saves Batman from death because the Joker wants to keep Batman around so they can keep fighting one another. And in truth, he loves Batman. Not in a shipping, they want to have a relationship kind of way. This is more of a very confusing, feud, bromance, aggressive nemesis type love. It's complicated but they really do care for one another in a very codependent and terrible way. Of course, it is later revealed that the vat of acid the Riddler was going to drop them in was actually just a harmless soda, and that this whole scenario was orchestrated by Poison Ivy in order to convince Harley Quinn that the Joker just doesn't care about her, and to set her free from his abusive grasp. But still, the Joker didn't know that, and he genuinely thought the Batman would die unless he stepped in, and he did step in to stop it. So, once again, he did save Batman's life. Yes, technically he didn't, but he thought he was, so I think it still counts. Batman the Brave and the Bold In a two-part story, an evil version of Batman, called Owlman, comes over to Batman's dimension as a scout for an invading army. Now, Batman, of course, defeats Owlman, and then steals his clothes, and goes to his dimension in order to defeat the evil Injustice League and stop the invasion plan. And he does all of this with the help of this universe's version of the Joker, who is of course a good guy, because it's a reverse universe. But after this, Batman returns home to find out that weeks have passed, as there is a time difference between their dimensions. And in all the time the Batman has gone, Owlman has dressed up as Batman and gone out on a crime wave, and made Batman public enemy number one in Gotham City. And so Batman is being hunted by the Justice League, and they almost manage to catch him, till he is saved by the Joker, who of course has worked out that the evil Batman is an imposter, since he knows Batman better than anyone, so he knows a fake Batman when he sees it. Now reluctantly, the Dark Knight teams up with the Joker, and the Clown Prince of Crime not only helps him to beat Owlman, but he actually saves his life. Batman is about to be run over by the Batmobile, but the Joker swoops in and manages to pull him to safety just at the last minute, because once again, only the Joker is allowed to kill the Dark Knight. No one else is. Now, ultimately, Owlman forms an alliance with all the villains of the world and captures the Justice League, holding them hostage. So Batman has to give him the trans-dimensional device back so Owlman can go home and bring his army back to conquer the world, which obviously Batman's never going to agree to. So Batman attacks him with the Joker. But of course, the Joker betrays Batman at this point and tries to kill him by coating him in wax. But of course, the Dark Knight expected this and manages to escape and go to an alternate dimension and get an army of alternate dimension Batman 
and uses them to defeat Owlman. Although the only important part of this for this video is really that the Joker managed to save him from being run over and killed, but I thought I'd give you the full story. And I do love how the Joker both saves Batman's life and then tries to kill him in a death trap in the very same day. It's very Joker and it really emphasises once again just how messed up and complicated their relationship really is. And that is the 5 best times that the Joker has saved Batman. Personally I think the best one of these is the Batman the Brave and the Bold one, as it's a full story and adventure that really explores the different aspects of their relationship. Especially when he goes to the alternate dimension and the Red Hood, who is the good version of the Joker, teams up with Batman to take down the Injustice League. So you get to see both sides of the Joker, if he was a good guy and if he's a bad guy. It's just quite interesting to see both sides of this. But which one of these is your favourite? And are there any other times that the Joker has saved Batman's life that you think should have been on this list? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to quickly remind everyone that we have some merchandise available on our store. And to say thanks to all of you who have donated to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.